Hey guys, Aaron here with Otter Creek Farm and BushHoggingServices.com. Uh, today is the, I guess officially the second day since getting the Kubota KX040, as you can see behind me. And I've got the uh, tractor loaded up for a dirt job that we've got coming up in a week or so. So uh, we've got a lot of things going on. It's the busy season and quite honestly I'm slammed. Uh, almost a little bit too much work. Uh, we've got a 60 acre bush hogging job earlier this week and the possibility of picking up a nine, another nine acre job. So that on top of a rather large dirt project that we have going on, it's a lot. And uh, excited about getting the Kubota. Um, you can see we were out here yesterday. I didn't film really much of it. I got a couple pictures and some short videos, but we were out here starting to work on the pond more more for skills development to work on that muscle memory since that's a very repetitive task uh, work on being able to pull the bucket level and uh, you know kind of create some things so what you can't see is we had to dig a ledge uh, down to the edge of the pond As a matter of fact I'll just walk over here and you know for someone that's an operator this is probably probably beyond super simple uh, but for someone that has less than eight hours on an excavator, maybe maybe less than ten hours, you know, this this is uh, what we're up to. So we are. Uh, it was too steep to come down, so we had to build that uh, little trail coming down here. And it looks like uh, we got a little bit too deep here because that's about water level, as you can see over there. But uh, the goal here is to make the pond bigger and deeper and uh, to get close enough to the water that we could reach to dig it out we had to dig this little trail here um, you know the goal is actually to make the pond come back all the way to that pile so there's actually a ton of dirt in this area that has to get pulled and the problem starts to become you know where am i going to put it uh, this side's pretty good i'd like to change the slope on that uh, so it'll be easier you can actually get down there with a mower if I want to keep it mowed but you know that kind of grass provides habitat for wildlife so uh, you know fish and uh, snakes and frogs and things like that need that kind of space so I really don't want to cut it down uh, uh, because ultimately you know I want this to clear up I want to put some fish in here it's just got to be deep enough so when the groundwater is low like it is now uh, they have a place to go and it's not going to be too shallow to survive. So um, today I'm going to be working on actually grubbing one of the fields uh, that I started to create. And I did a little when I rented the excavator last time. Uh, but now I'm going to use my excavator. And then later today uh, I'm going to load the excavator back up onto the trailer and take it back to the dealer. Uh, they've got to put a return line on it so when I get my rut manufacturing uh, cutter it'll be able to dump straight into the hydraulic reservoir with no back pressure. Uh, I am also going to have to take my trailer back to the people that built it for me because the ramps do not come close enough together uh, to be safe. You can see we've got a gap here between this point and that point they should have run the bar all the way across and they didn't so they're gonna have to cut those brackets off get a piece of steel that runs all the way across and move these brackets over into that middle section so I can slide the ramps all the way together uh, I can't get a zero turn up there I can't get a four-wheeler up there and I've got to be able to do that so uh, I'm gonna be basically not working for two weeks so I want to get all this stuff done during that time frame and uh, come back and get after it uh, but this trailer here is a it's got two 55 hundred pound uh, Dexter axles on it And it works great for hauling the Kubota and it's the primary reason why I went with this machine as opposed to the 057 It's just light enough to be on this trailer. It's just super sketchy right now going up and down those ramps uh, Also the angle of the ramps the, the ramps aren't long enough. So I'm, I'm gonna have them add a maybe a a uh, you know a 10 inch piece of steel onto this to extend that out somehow so the the ramp isn't um, as steep because when the excavator comes down if the bucket is on that side then it actually digs into the dirt which is problematic so 
a couple things that have to get done. So let's hop in the excavator, get it warmed up, and uh, go grub a field. All I'm trying to do is drag the teeth through the soil and uncover the palmetto roots. Uh, which are difficult to get with the box plate. The box plate just it clogs them up and you end up having to take them out by hand. So I'm looking for the big root balls that uh, the box blade won't rip out. And then once this is kind of scratched like this, then uh, bringing the tractor in with the box blade makes this uh, work go much faster. I don't think I would try to do this with the uh, excavator. I don't have the, the skill set yet.
took it in. So it used to look just like that, full of palmettos. First thing I did was I had it uh, forestry mulched to get rid of a lot of the above ground vegetation. And then I dissed it a few times and all I could find was these big root balls from the palmettos. So now that I have an excavator, I'm making the faster work of getting these palmettos out of here instead of taking uh, slower steps using the tractor.
know. Uh, I didn't do any dirt work. I was uh, scratching the field to get the palmetto roots out of it. Yeah, so it's there's so much up and down on that that it's very hard to get anything consistent with it in that capacity. But I haven't tried doing a road yet, which I think will be better. lined up yep. and getting over that pivot point. It gets bouncy and then it gets real nerve-wracking. But once I get over this little point, it's all right. the pivot point. Yeah, that's about average. 